the science 25, experiment number one. So before you come to the lab, make sure you have the lab available with you. This experiment is about the matrix system, density, and temperature. So first, we need for the matrix system is a ruler. We also need uh, for density experiment, we need a graduated cylinder. For the density experiment, we are also using the centrifugal balance. And uh, for the temperature, obviously we need a thermometer. Okay, so for the first experiment, before you come to the lab, make sure you read your lab manual because uh, we don't want anyone go last in when they do the lab. So at least you have some knowledge before you come to the lab. So first procedure uh, says that measure and record your height using a meter stick. So here we are using a meter stick. So what we are going to do it says that take your height. Trying to get a mark here. So here we will use our scales, which are just the inches. So you can see that it comes here. It's about 62.5. Should be when you take the measure, you should be on eye level so that you can see. I think so it's on uh, 62.8. So that's why we always have to think when you take the measurement, it should be on eye level. Otherwise, you can see from the down and you can get a wrong. Here. So, always you have to be on high level so that you can see the measurement. So, I can see now it's a 62.8. So, 62.8, this is in inches. Okay. So, this is my height. Alright, um, for the second one, it says measure a uh, cubit, measure the distance from elbow to the tip of the middle finger. Okay. I will show you later how to convert from inches to centimeter to meter. First, we will get the data. This is our experiment, so we don't want to waste our time. First, we get the data and then we have time to finish our lab. So suppose there is there is a black thing. So I can put it like here from zero. So I, I think it's zero. Okay. So zero to middle finger. So elbow. Middle finger. Still. distance from the end of the nose to the tip of the right thumb. Okay. It says that from my nose to tip of the right thumb. Tip of the right thumb. Most people are right. The measure is uh, straight. Yes. So 
its arms, you can see 71. This ruler actually is a centimeter. So 71 centimeters. So now we can do the conversion of unit. So this is number number one, this is one number two, and this is one number three. Okay, so when we do the unit conversion, we can use our unit information. So from this table, we can easily can get, um, we can easily can do from any unit to our unit conversion. So, number one is 62.8 inches. So, 62.8 inches. We are trying to find out in so we know that as I have inches, I need to go to centimeter and meter. We will try to we will try to find out the relationship with inches and centimeter. So from the table, we know that one inches. Is two point five four centimeters. So from there, inches by inches will be cancelled. So we will find our answer in centimeters. So remember, on the top, whatever the number is, we can multiply. So this part we can multiply divided by the bottom part. That's how it's easy to find out our unit conversion, and you will never ever get the wrong answer. Because if you try to cancel any unit, it should be on the opposite side inches, inches. So we can get the desired unit on the top. So 62.8 times 2.54, which gives me 159. Point five one two in centimeter. Yeah. Okay. Here, my I, I took my data in three stick figure. Okay. So my answer should be in a three stick figure too. So one hundred fifty nine point five, right? So if it is anything. After, if I want to get a three-stick figure, so 159, as it is five or more, we will round it off. So it should be 160. If it is like 159.4, my answer would be 159. But as it is 0.5, so five and more, we can round it off to get my three-stick figure. So my answer would be 160. The second one is when I go to the second part, do not use this round data number. You have to use this number. So 159.512 because this is not the actual one, okay? This should be the actual one after doing all the measures. So this is the round data amount. Graduated cylinder. This is called a graduated cylinder. 
you can find out in your lab 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, any of them. So it depends on which one you're using. You have to use some general knowledge, like which one will go inside. Like here, I'm going to use the copper. If I use the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, I cannot drop it inside. So just common sense. Okay, so this is 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. So we are going to get the volume of water. I mean any liquid. We have to know how to how we will get the volume of liquid. When you read, here is hundred, till hundred, there is a reading, right? So we have to know the meniscus curve where we can read the graduate cylinder. If I can see, I have liquid in here. Remember, when you read anything, it should be an eye level so that you can get the correct data. Okay, so when I read it in here, I can see the meniscus curve, which only says that 39 in volume. 39 millimeter, milliliter. So if you can see, they get the If you can see the so this one is 39 milliliter. Okay. So first part it says volume of graduated cylinder plus water. So I get this one. When you drop any metal in a glass bar, make sure you don't drop it like suddenly because the glass bar is a very, uh, it, it, can, it can break down, right? It's a very thin glass. So when you, you put inside in any metal, you should slide it so that it doesn't break. So copper. I'm getting some bubble here, which I don't want. Okay. So now my in eye level, I can see. Forty, forty-one. I can say forty-one. The meniscus part, it comes 42. Each mark is a one, so 40, 41, 42. Water plus water. So if I can't 
the volume of copper cylinder is three units. Now, so I will check my box. to the next part, which one is I'm getting the mass using the different balances. So how so the thing is I did the experiment, right? I get the mass of copper. But I'm not sure like to make satisfaction that my desired mass is actually okay or not. So we can get we can use two different balances one we are going to use the central gun and another one is analytical balance. So this is analytical balance, it's easy to use it. You can say this is digi digital and this central drum is analytical. So if it is digital, there's less chance to get the error than the analytical one. And also experiment there's a human error, you can get the wrong answer too. Okay. Let's do my So this copper cylinder, you can see this is already in zero, zero point zero zero one. So now I'm putting it up here. It's twenty six point seven five almost. Okay, twenty six point seven five. Actually, if I if I don't do the if I don't round it out my answer, so this is correct. Almost correct.
dance to bar. We can move it forward in here. And also, here is the line. You have to match it to get the exact mass. So this line and this line should be matched so that I can get my actual mass. This is between 6 and 7, so fine. If I check with the ruler, um, okay. So if I check with the ruler, can get 26, 26.7, I can get 26.7, so 0.6, so 20, 26,
by hand in each way. So this is correct. So after doing the calculation, we get 1.5512. The thing I did is, as I told you, on the top part, we can multiply. And whatever is found in the bottom part, we can divide. So if you have some numbers, multiple numbers at the bottom, so all the numbers will be multiplied. The bottom thing, all the top part, the numbers will be multiplied. So we can divide from the top to the bottom. So that's how we can get our answer. So now my answer is 1.59512. We need the specific figure as my data is 2.8, which is specific figure. So I will get the specific figure. As after 9, my number is 5, my digit is 5. If it is as I told you that 5 or more will be rounded up. So it should be 1.60. This is my specific figure. This is my answer. For the core form. Now for the second one, 50 point six. Hundred is a zero point seven more in 
Yeah. 